Okay, so as fast as possible, obviously, on the uh, straight line of uh, Zandvoort, which is also really a very, very short straight line. Uh, at least you're coming from almost a flat out, with many cars flat out, uh, very wide uh, turn. So, you know, the top speed is low, but not that low. Uh, that's something. Um, but yeah, so. Um, Uh, PUs, we didn't have any crashes on... Are you talking about PC or console? I don't know. Okay, you can see the mouse, very good. So, you're arriving at full speed uh, and your first uh, reference point to start braking is either this billboard here, you know, Tarzan for the famous uh, T1 and... Uh, Either that or this line, white line and red line, on the asphalt. It's a very, very good... Uh, you see, you, you practically you have a specific place where you can start braking. Now, getting better and better and better, you will start braking a little bit later uh, than, uh, than this uh, line. Uh, but, you know, for starters, uh, just go with, uh, with this line. And you should be you should be fine. Uh, let me check that everything is correct here because, uh, all right, okay. So now it works again, right? So again, let me show you from the outside. This is the line. As soon as you go over the line with your car, uh, or even a little bit sooner at the start of uh, of your laps when you are exploring your car and your circuit, uh, this is the place to start braking uh, uh, for the T1. Right, so, um, as wide as possible, as usual, okay? Now, as you can see, this turn has an incredible amount of camber, which really helps with, you know, lateral grip. Uh, and it also can help you with uh, your braking distance. Now, the, the, the trick here is not staying as wide as possible for the whole braking zone and then go in, but start going in just a little bit sooner uh, practically arriving here, you see, at this uh, angle of the white internal line and making something like a very early first apex, okay? So very early first apex, you're still going to keep breaking here. Uh, it's good to, you know, give it a little bit more extra steering uh, into this uh, situation because the extra camber helps you to bring the car in. Keep on modulating the, the, uh, the braking uh, force. Uh, this is a turn that you can use a lot of trail braking. Uh, you might end a tiny bit wide, but don't overdo it. Because if you overdo it, you're going to end up uh, way too wide and to the dirty and marbles part of the asphalt. So let me show you from the outside. You see? So you can go a little bit wide like this which is almost, you know, a car uh, width uh, from the, from the uh, curb, and then you need to go back again. Okay, don't go too wide because, as you can see, there is plenty of marbles. You are not anymore on the rubber line here, and so you're going to lose grip. So just a little bit and then instantly in again, okay? So... Of course, don't touch the curb, as Claudio very well s says, because, you know, it's a smooth curb, but very, very high, so it will totally unbalance uh, your, uh, your, your car. Uh, keep going. And uh, practically, uh, um, because of, as we said, this, this turn is, uh, has a lot of, uh, of camber, and it helps you with lateral grip, uh, I'm starting to accelerate... Uh, more or less, when those billboards here, you can see the billboards, when I see the billboards end, you know, they go past away from my um, left uh, roll bar here. When they go past away, I'm already on the accelerator and start accelerating. This is my reference point for the acceleration uh, out of the T1. All right? Now, T1, you can also use this, uh, uh, this curb at the exit. Don't go too wide because, as you see, 
it narrows more and more and uh, outside the uh, curb you have sand which obviously it's gonna unbalance the car but most probably will slow you down uh, it's not a good thing to go there um, so stay careful don't go over there and get into the uh, asphalt as soon as possible on to the asphalt again following the circuit here is no big deal and now we approach this really hard t3 they call it because this one also they call it t2 but so it's the third uh, uh band of the circuit now when to start braking for this uh band uh you can see here there's no real um uh, there's no real reference point here there's no easy uh, reference point because um, normally uh, you should start braking somewhere here but there's no real reference point so what you want to do is keep an eye on the end of the curb here and brake before that right before that now obviously some of you people might say well i would start braking somewhere around here where i see uh the rubber line starting you know uh being visible as usual i never advise you to follow the rubber line because you can see it now but if the track is green or fast or it starts race race uh, raining you won't be able to see the rubber line so take reference points that they are fixed and you know that you can always you know count on them not take reference points that they can change uh, depending on the meteo you know weather conditions uh, or i don't know the sun shadows or stuff like that don't take such reference points um so what to do as i said this is more or less the breaking point here uh keep an eye on the end of the curb on the outside curb and break before that uh, obviously start breaking way before that uh, and slowly go closer and closer but pr it's practically impossible to break exactly at the end of the curb so always break a little bit sooner all right so um you break here you start going inside the turn now be very very careful it's easy to rotate the car here in the entry with trail braking and you need to do so but if you overdo it as you can see this curb here is really really very high and you really don't want to, uh, you know, go up this curb because uh, the speed is medium speed turn. Uh, it's over a crest. Uh, you certainly don't want to make the car jump. You're going to lose it. You're going to end up on the wall because as you can see, the wall here is very, very close. Uh, or you're going to spin or best case scenario, you're going to lose lots of time. So don't go over this curb. You have to be very careful and precise. Uh, to do the turn properly if you have rotated properly the car during the turning then again at the end of those billboards here you can see the bill billboards that they end here when you see the billboards ending close to your roll bar this is the uh, correct uh, place to you know go into the accelerator again and start accelerating outside the uh, the turn to the exit um, there is no practically no curb at the exit here and the curb there is here is also it also has steps so i highly advise you to not really use uh this this curb because as you can see if you go here then you know the suspension start moving around the car already is very very loaded to the outside wheels because you are sliding a little bit towards the outside and if you go over the curbs you will totally you know jump and go outside and when you go outside here um, you're gonna lose traction you're gonna lose even uh, you know uh, balance of the car you might even you know uh, touch uh, the the curb with the under tray of the car and it's really really tricky and very dangerous thank you mtf dark eagle and croon loon and uh, funny italy and everybody else for the subscription okay so don't do this you see i can't even go back now, um, some people try to go outside to go as right as possible and then go into the turn. Um, I usually don't do this. I'm staying around here. For me, it feels pretty much the same uh, speed. 
Um, try whatever you think it works. Okay, try the one way, try the other way, and see how it works for you. Uh, usually, I think that if I stay here, I have a better possibility to, you know, break sooner and be able to break into a straight line. So when to break? Uh, I start breaking again at the end of this billboard or if the tires are fresh and you know the car has low fuel etc I will start break my braking zone at the end of the Assetto Corsa Competizione um, publicity here so either here or here depending how much I want to push my uh, braking zone so keep an eye on the left as soon as you go over that start braking brake really hard this is a first gear turn and again you want to stay as you can see there is lots and lots of cumber and you want to stay inside and keep the car inside um, uh, as much as, uh, as possible um, to exit the turn we have a very very nice um, uh, reference point and as usual, it's uh, the end of uh, the side wall, and this time is also orange. We always know that when we see orange somewhere in the guardrails or you know a, a safety uh, wall like that, uh, it's usually a pretty good uh, reference point to uh, keep an eye for. Uh, now, normally you might find that the car can accelerate sooner, but the problem is that uh, the rod starts to go uphill. And not only it goes uphill, but it also loses the camber. So if you start accelerating sooner here, you might end up with power on understeer. And that will bring you, you know, wide and you won't be able to push the car in. You will be forced to, you know, raise your foot from the accelerator. And raising the foot from the accelerator means that you lose accelerator for the uh, long uh, acceleration straight that follows. So... Have a little bit of patience, maybe stay on the accelerator steadily, but don't go full on it. And when you arrive here and you go through the orange uh, safety wall on your, on your uh, right, then full on acceleration and the car should be able to follow the line. You see how it goes uphill and there is no uh, camber anymore. Actually, the camber go goes negative. So this always pushes the cars, you know, outside and uh, you, you end up with uh, track width in no time at all. So a little bit of patience, wait for the orange uh, safety wall, and then accelerate. Uh, Rafael Teixeira says, it's important that reference points change a little bit with different camera settings, uh, FOV uh, and distance. This is very true. Keep that always in mind. Those things work for my settings, you know. Um, if you have changed your FOV or something like that, uh, the reference points are still pretty much the same, but they do change a little bit, especially when you, you know, expect them to, 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 to start the braking or to start the acceleration. For, for example, if you have three screens, you might not want to see something passing through the first roll bar, but maybe a little bit uh, later. But, you know, those are the reference points. You can just find out how to combine them with what you're seeing on your screen. Uh, Maurizio Mano says, question about lines in turn four. I try to stay wide in the middle and try to take a late apex because this lets me have more straight front uh, tire and uh, more easier full gas. Is this an error? Absolutely not. This is also a very good um, line to get. Just be careful, don't go too wide because you're gonna you know, lose some time and you're gonna end up to the track that is not rubber and you're gonna lose some grip. But if you do it properly, this is again a perfect line, probably even better than what I just saw. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on. So now this is practically a straight. Actually, it's not a straight. There are lots of bends here, but you can get them all flat out. It is important to use as little steering input as possible, because. Less steering input at high speeds means a more stable car and obviously less scrub from the tires, which means you ruin your tires much less, your tires will last longer, and most importantly, you don't scrub speed from your acceleration because the higher speed you have and the more you scrub with your tires and the more the acceleration is slower, 
because the tiles create rolling resistance, uh, create uh, lateral forces, and don't let you know your your engine to accelerate fully. So uh, let's move on. Again, here you can just you know go over this white uh, part here, but don't touch uh, the grass. <coughs> stay as <coughs> sorry, stay as uh, right as possible, and then again as little steering inputs as possible and go in this is one of the first tricky corners it's not really tricky you can easily do it flat out okay but the less steering wheel you're using as we said less consumption on your tires and more um, acceleration you have it is also very very important to do this turn and uh, stay you know as left as possible because the next turn is a tricky turn uh, and it is a tricky turn because uh, you really need to get the perfect line out of this turn uh, I advise you to go and s uh, watch my uh, today uh, my, my live stream of from the uh, last Friday or the video that I've posted today where we did some fast laps uh, into the circuit um, you need to take this line perfectly usually uh, the perfect line is somewhere around here when you are just touch, you know, this uh, curb uh, at your right. Okay, so let's have a look at that. You see, I'm already touching way too much. You, you have to even less than this. Okay, even less than this. Just touch it. And uh, you really need to approach this. You see here, now, this... Um, uh, this bump that we just went through, which is quite a big bump, all right? You can see here again, boom. You see? This one. Now, this bump here can really, really unbalance your car, especially if your car is a little bit soft and touches the ground when you are passing through this at over 200 kilometers per hour. You are still turning. You are going over a crest. And while you're doing so, the car touches the ground. This is very bad. So... Obviously, you're going to say, what is that? Is that a bug because it's so big? No, this is actually, you know, a proper uh, bump on the real uh, road. Uh, David Perel gave us lots of um, feedback about that. He actually told us, uh, you know, when, when you are going over that bump, you think that the whole car is going to explode because it's so hard and you are going so fast over it and you have so much downforce pushing down that the car goes over and it's like, bam, and everything. I mean, it's, it's really a terrible sensation. And you have to, you know, put your, keep your, your, your foot on, on the accelerator and keep on going flat out. And you can see, you know, the road uh, going uphill and then over the crest and downhill again. And it really is very, very scary, especially when it rains. So you have to go over that with as little steering input as possible stable car not having the car you know sliding around and if you do everything correctly you're gonna end up here very very wide this outside curb is where you want to have your your uh, vision pointed looking forward and uh, way ahead from behind while you're still you know turning and then you want to have your car practically straight and you're steering also straight while you're starting starting going down downhill all right so you're starting going downhill and now it's getting even more trickier than before um, so again the end of roll bar, of uh, guardrail here orange painted it's our friend this is your reference point you are going past through this and you start breaking in uh, fifth gear or fourth fourth gear i don't remember right now and you want to you know downshift when you are getting more and better uh you have more practice with your car and this uh, track uh you will start you know breaking after that uh orange guardrail this side road is also a very good um reference point uh, i'm not telling you to start breaking on this side road but at least a little bit behind it right but between the orange end of the guardrail and that uh, side road, that's the perfect place to start breaking really heavy at first and then really modulating your steering wheel and your braking force. You know, you have to really modulate them because this is a very, very high speed turn. 
it is going downhill we know that those cars are extremely pitch sensitive so the car will start you know moving around so you need a setup that will support you it doesn't go instantly into an oversteer because it's too much pitch sensitive and you also want smooth uh, steering inputs to initiate the rotation the turn in and you also want very fast steering inputs if you feel that the car is going way too much out of balance so you need to you know counter steer and go back again as fast as possible remember when you are counter steering for oversteer don't wait for the car to get a set and then go back again it's too late it's gonna slap you and you're gonna end up on the other side so you go in like that okay the car starts rotating way too much so you need to counter steer you counter steer and instantly going back again and again if it's if it needs a second time it's better than you know just going there and waiting okay 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 i'm sliding waiting 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 okay now i have grip again let's move way too late slaps and you go to the other side so that's why you see also real drivers that they are doing stuff like like that okay and you say why did he did that i mean i didn't see any movement they do this because they know the car starts rotating you feel it also okay counter steer and go back again counter steer and go back again very fast you don't have to wait what you're doing when you're doing fast is you are moving ahead of what the car is going to do don't wait for the car for the car to do the, its stuff but move ahead of the car right okay so still we're still braking here we're going inside the turn usually the brake is more or less up to this point where you can see here this semaphore for the uh, yellow uh, flags or something like that uh, so usually you 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 keep braking and you know dozing and modulating your brake brake force up to the semaphore then you have some phase that you are costing and while you are approaching the uh, curb here before after it depends on your car setup your practice your driving style whatever uh, this is where you want to go on the accelerator hard uh, and possibly the car will help you will rotate a little bit with power and you're going to end up here once again don't go very wide because as you can see uh, the curb is stepped which means the tires will start you know hopping and uh, jumping and it very very brutally ends uh, the curb here so you really need to stay up to the white line and not farther away uh, sometimes you need to go over that but you know be prepared uh, sometimes it's even better you know when you're when you see that you have no possibility to keep the car inside the asphalt to go wider put your tires into this uh, cement okay uh, and uh, and then go back again it's gonna be wild it's gonna be bad but you're probably gonna save the car okay so um, move on we keep on going keep the car as left as possible now you can see here again we have no real reference points for the next turn okay but you have uh, the left side of the rod making a little bit of a kink here a little bit of an angle you can see this there's an angle here right here so this is your reference point to start braking so you have to watch that you know angle uh, from from way behind your your eyes have to be you know over there and once you arrive here you start braking hard shift down to third gear and now you want to rotate the car and move the car up into this curb now watch carefully you need to take the curb but not too much why because the curb has an extra curb <laughs> exactly on the apex all right hello understeer me up welcome you see that now that's an extra curb that you know goes up like this and if you take it the car will hop and jump and you're gonna lose a lot of time you you're gonna go uh, extremely off of balance and you don't you don't want to happen uh, you don't want this to happen so what you want to do is you want to be in a situation like this let me show you 
Now, this is the ideal situation you want to, to be with, okay? So you have practically the car rotated. Now, the car slides towards the outside, and you want your front inner wheel, which is practically almost on the air because you have already stepped up on the first, you know, lower uh, curb right here. You see it's a little bit lower, okay? So the, the front inner wheel is practically almost on the air. So it can get uh, the, the slight bump of that first part of the extra curb without upsetting too much the car, okay? So you want the car to be in a slight oversteer. You're going to touch a little bit the curb with your, your, you, with your inner front uh, wheel, and the car will keep rotating under acceleration. You want to be already in acceleration when you are here, and it will slide out and hopefully everything will be fine. Uh, it sounds extremely complicated. It is extremely complicated, but with practice, we know we can do it. So keep on practicing. This is how we want to, uh, to do this kind of turn. So again, you are going to slide in a control oversteer outside. Uh, don't go over this curb again. Once again, as you can see, the curb is stepped. Uh, you're going to jump and go out to, to the grass, which is very slippery. So you need to do everything properly and end up here still on the tarmac. All right. Now, the next turn is very tricky and strange. Actually, normally it's a very simple turn. You just brake. Okay. Go in. It's a slow turn. Not much to do. It seems to have enough grip. But to take it fast enough, it's trigger than it sounds. And at the same time, if you do it properly, it's much faster than it seems and even easier than it seems. So what do you need to do? Um, you need to keep on going here and start braking just a little bit be before that uh, billboard with the name of the turn. Uh, so you start braking here. Now, I've seen many people going inside the turn sooner, which means that they end up on the turn somewhere like this here. Okay? And they are like here. Now, if you are in this position, somewhere here, okay, if you are like this, then this turn becomes extremely slow. You have to slow down the car a lot. While slowing down, you have to brake. So there's lots of understeer going in. And you have to be slower and slower and slower. And either they manage to slow the car and they are very slow at the apex, or they just, you know, slide with understeer to the outside, and then they have to wait before rotating the car and going out again. But, but here's what you can do. Now, if you look at this turn from way ahead like this, you see. Now, from the inside of, of the car, it seems like a 180 degrees turn. But if you look at it from the outside like that, you see that it's a little bit more than 90 degrees, practically. Uh, so. If you stay a little bit wide here and then release the brakes and go smoothly into the apex and out again like this here, here the turn is not so narrow anymore and you can accelerate. It's practically it's ended. Even if it's going still around, you can still be in uh, full throttle. And this turn becomes something like 90, 95, 100 degrees turn. And it can be much, much faster than what you have thought uh, it would be. So the idea here is, you know, you brake in a straight line like this, you release your brakes and start going in, okay? Now, most people, as we said here, they keep on turning more. When you are arriving at the apex, start, you know, going outside. Even if you looking that, oh my God, I'm gonna end up completely outside. Now, here's the trick. If you keep going outside like this, you see the turn itself widens up. Okay, uh, and so you end up with your steering wheel having much less steering angle than what you have anticipated, and it's much easier to push on the accelerator, full throttle open, and complete the turn much, much faster than before. Okay, so you need some extra practice on this turn to understand how to do it, but once you grab 
the the fact that it is a much wider turn that it, that what it seems when you are approaching and it also opens up at the exit uh, while it's still you know the bend keeps going but it's much wider the uh, radius is much uh, wider so that you can you know keep on going then this turn becomes much easier than than it seems um, now next turn Next turn is very tricky for me. Uh, I'm still having issues. Uh, I'm managing, but I'm having issues. So, as usual, I'm trying. Now, I have some people going way outside. Uh, one very nice guy on the um, on the comments uh, told me told me that uh, I was doing it pretty much properly, which means stay more or less at the center of the road. <clears throat> Sorry again. Um, don't go way too much on the outside uh, because you're gonna lose time. You're gonna do much more, uh, you know, uh, uh, much more meters. Uh, so stay on the middle of the road. Uh, once again, we have here uh, the orange um, guardrail. This is your reference points, or a little bit before that, you know, uh, start breaking really, really hard break really really hard because this turn seems to be fast it seems to be similar to the turn before okay but in reality it's even slower at the apex so you have to break really hard you have to keep braking and rotating the car while going in like this and you see it keeps on going more narrow so you really have to be patient here right here you have to be patient go, don't go with the accelerator because if you go on the accelerator, well, first of all, the camber is strange, and two things are going to happen. Or you're going to have big understeer, and you're going to end up so wide that you will either, either be forced you know, to release your uh, pressure on the accelerator, and you're losing time, uh, or you're going to end up you know, outside on the grass. Uh, or, depending on the car, you might get lots of uh, power oversteer, and you're gonna end up at the exit with the car sideways or almost sideways, but still, you know, lots of traction control intervention, which means you are slower, slower. So a little bit of patience, okay? When you see either the end of the curb or those um, tracks here, this is the time to start applying throttle. Don't apply the throttle like this instantly. Go in a much more uh, controlled way. Uh, you have to be, you know, more uh, progressive in applying throttle here and start you know accompanying the car uh, straightening the the steering wheel and going outside like this once again another stepped uh, curb here don't go over here really really probably this is the worst of, of all of them uh, if you go over here you're certainly gonna end up way wide here uh, into the grass into into the uh, sun trap so again don't touch this this curb is really nasty okay so let's uh move on now obviously full throttle here full throttle now first indication that you are arriving at the second is straight the first line we don't want to do anything at all into this uh, line yet so full throttle again second line this is where you should start considering braking uh, if it is the first times that you are you know practicing on the circuit then start braking exactly at the white line the better you you become the more you see that you can you know start braking much much later even just before the start of the curb but to do so you need to become more precise on entering the first part of the narrow chicane here. Uh, so start with the white line on the road and then slowly move forward your braking uh, point to around the 100 meter or just before uh, you know the, um, uh, the start of, of the curb. Don't go exactly at the start of the curb because you won't make it. Uh, but somewhere around here, you also have this uh, billboard here as another reference point. So you have plenty of reference point for the first part of the chicane. Uh, breaking as straight as possible. 
right? As straight as possible, turning in, no big issues. You can't go over the curb, but as you can see, again, it is another uh, typical uh, curb of uh, Zandvoort which means that you have the first part here that it is uh, pretty low and no big deal, but the second part is even higher. So I do not uh, advise you to go over that second part. Once more, just put your tires touching the start of this extra curb and uh, you're good to go. So let's see this, just go over here over the first part of the curb, touching the second one. And as soon as you are here, your foot can go on the accelerator again, hard. Accelerate just a little bit, you know, there's no much space, but you can really go hard with the accelerator. And then again, instantly hard on the brake again, and you're ready for the next part. Now, the next part, as you can see, there is lots of camber that will help you keep the car inside uh, in the inside of, uh, of the turn, but you don't want to go over the green stuff uh, because, as you can see, there are those very high uh, yellow sausages, as we, as we tell them. Uh, you, don't want to, you don't want to go over that. Some people do go over that, uh, but the car keeps on jumping. The um, traction control engages I, I don't advise you. I think you are faster if you stay down over here and it's much better uh, and you have much better control of your car. So stay here, stay close. Uh, and as you see, either the end of the billboard or the orange guardrail depends again on your line, your setup, your car, many, many uh, things to consider, but your reference point must be either this one or this one. As soon as you go over this one or the uh, orange guardrail, you start accelerating, or here, for example, you start accelerating and you should be good to go outside without big deal. Now, this is a tricky um, uh, curb. Now, as you can see, it's smooth. It's a pretty smooth curb, but this uh, strange curb, is uh, actually like a a triangle, a, a pyramid, pyramid, something like that. Okay, it's it's like this, which means that uh, either you really go outside, you know, like this. Okay, you see already my my <laughs> my wheel was on the air, my outside wheel. So either you go outside like this, okay, and hope for the better, or Okay, or if you stay with the car in that situation, let me try to maneuver my car like this. Okay, somewhere around here, that's pretty much the, the worst thing you can do. Why? Because obviously, again, depending on the car, it means that your car is practically touching the ground right on the top of the pyramid of that, that nasty little curb around here. Uh, keep in mind that right now we are stopped, but remember when you are racing, you're going over that, the whole car, you know, is ha has a roll towards the outside, the suspension are lower, the, you have downforce, so you're gonna scrap really badly with the under tray of your car and you, you're gonna lose traction on, on your tires and grip and the traction would control with, uh, again, engage, you, you're gonna, uh, end up losing lots of time. So uh, be careful. Uh, don't overdo uh, this, uh, this curb. Uh, my advice is again to, to stay in a situation more or less like this. This is where you want to, to be at most, you know? So just a little bit of, over that it will help you, you know, to man maintain the car in uh, the line and that's it. Okay, down, right to the other side, left side of the road. That's a very, very nice turn we are approaching. Your reference point for start braking is, again, the yellow, uh, the orange guardrail, end of guardrail in orange. Uh, so once you are through the guardrail, you will start braking. Third gear, 
and inside lots of curb, lots of uh, cumber again from the road. Um, now it depends. Some people go really wild and go way over uh, that curb. Um, for me, the best times, the, the best laps I did into this circuit was by maintaining my inner tires on the red white curb and not going over the uh the curb stone here uh cement uh some people will even cut into that and even make better lap times than me it depends on your ability your setup your car whatever as i said usually my best situation is being somewhere around here okay and something like that so just you know touching the curb stones here the uh the, the cement uh this is the, the best position when i'm on the apex and then full throttle uh the camber of the road will help you rotate the car and stay uh properly outside wide no big issues here even if you go a little bit over the curb even if it's stepped you can you can handle it and on for the last turn now the last turn sometimes on some cars you can do it flat out again depends on your setup uh sometimes you can't uh, it depends but so let's see how we can deal with it and what to do when you cannot make it you know full throttle uh, easily thanks alex for the subscription so stay a little bit on the outside don't go instantly in okay obviously on the accelerator full throttle now start turning just a tiny bit later so don't go instantly in the inside because if you end up here then you really have to lift off you need to go in just a little bit later and you need to be on the apex around here at the start of uh, of the curb now Here's the situation. If you are already feeling understeer before arriving at the apex, it pretty much 99% of the nine times out of 10, you won't, you won't make it to the outside without lifting. So if you feel already un big understeer here and you feel the car sliding wide, here's what you can do. Now, instead of you know keeping the accelerator down like this 100% as you are, you can modulate your accelerator so just you know bring the accelerator to 80 70 percent right so keep on the accelerator but just you know raise a little bit not by much okay 70 80 percent something like that this will help the car you know re regain a little bit of pitch forward and not having you know the nose raised up and putting the nose down will give you some extra downforce to help rotate the car uh, you can do this up until you arrive on the apex here and when you are here at the middle of the curb you can go flat out again and you will be able to make the the, the turn this only if you feel that you aren't you ain't gonna make it but you still you don't want to lose lots of time by ending up very wide and having issues you know you have to lift properly and losing lots of time if you do that if you just lift lift a little bit uh, you ain't gonna lose lots of time and especially in race conditions um, it's not like you know you're gonna lose uh, 10 kilometers per hour so that the cars behind you will overtake you you can do that and you know once you feel the car properly rotated just step on it take the car outside and that's it that is uh, a lap at uh, Zandvoort uh, we have our reference points we have our lines and uh, I hope that uh, you liked it and hopefully it will be useful for, for you to, to get better into this uh, pretty tricky circuit. One of the most difficult circuits, uh, especially to race, because it never leaves you with, you know, some time to breathe and relax. And um, you are always turning, controlling, braking, accelerating, you're always doing something and even at the main straight line, it's so short that you don't really have any time to, to, to relax into this uh, circuit. Uh, 